becoming a party of the very high and the very low. Uh, if you pull out the working class, you've got people who are very well educated and very well off. Those people talk funny. Latinx, I've never met a Latinx. I've never met a BIPOC. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today, we got to talk about what you just saw, which was CNN, I guess you would say, contributor Van Jones, talking about how the Democrats have become very weird, very unrecognizable, and just strange to the average person, and that's turning them off. Now, this is something that's pretty obvious because BIPOC, what's that? Um, person of color, all this LGBTQ, elemental P, drag queen story time. These things are really ridiculous. To the real high and lofty, they think these things are good and they're doing the right thing for the so-called underprivileged person, but the actual underprivileged person does not benefit from it. And the working class just gets squeezed to pay for all the stuff that they don't want either. Now, before I really go into it, let's roll the clip. In this clip, you'll see a little bit more from what you just saw at the beginning of what Van Jones was talking about. And after we get done watching that, I'll come back. I'll talk about what was said there. Then I'll give you the rest of my two cents and my deep detail analysis. And then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. We're in danger of becoming a party of the very high and the very low. Uh, if you pull out the working class, you've got people who are very well educated and very well off. Those people talk funny. Latinx, I've never met a Latinx. I've never met a BIPOC. I've never met you know all this, this weird stuff that, these highly educated people say it's bizarre. Nobody talks that way at the barbershop, the nail salon, uh, the, 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 uh, the grocery store, uh, the community center. But that's how we talk now. So that's weird. And then the people who are very low down on the economic ladder need a bunch of stuff. You wind up over promising. Oh, we're going to give you reparations to, to people at the bottom of the economic ladder, talking weird to appeal to people at the top of the economic ladder. And the working class walks away from you. That is the danger we're facing. All right, so you saw that, you heard that. Now, shout out to Van Jones for keeping the autoway plane and just expressing how a lot of Americans feel. Now, am I going to sit here and say Van Jones is a conservative and he's on quote unquote our side? I'm not going to sit here and say that, but you know the whole thing, broken clock, right twice a day. I think Van Jones um, has been more right than wrong. I say probably about 60% right, 40% wrong. But right here, he's 100% right. What is a BIPOC? Do you even know what that is? That means black indigenous person of color. Now, I know that because I'm into all this a lot. This is what I do all day, every day. I read and I research, and it's my job to understand what's going on with these really ridiculous and woke terms. You know, the kind of communist thing where they change language, invent new words, make existing words mean different things. Okay. I have to be on top of all of that so I understand what's going on. It's like, having to be a lawyer to read certain documents because they're written in a way to keep the information from you and I just regular everyday normies, right? But most of you guys are just now hearing what that means or even the term in general for the first time right now today. But the left, the, the, the quote unquote high left, the far left, they use it all the time. They write it in their documents. It's to the point where when you read some of the documents, it reads like lawyer speak, but it's not lawyer speak. It's woke speak. It's leftist speak. It's what they think makes sense. Okay, that's like the whole thing with um, Latinx, the dumbest thing in the world. The term Latinx, it came from people not wanting to put gender, um, I guess you would say gender sounds, or it, it, they, they, they don't want to feminize or masculinize words. But the Spanish language is that abuelo, abuela, grandma, grandpa, right? Or vice versa. You didn't say what I'm talking about. It's like that in the whole language. You can't just say Latinx rather than Latina for a woman or Latino for a man because their entire language is like that. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody really says that except for the high and far left. Again, these are things that are just weird to the average person and they have no connection to it. If you're going to be a Democrat person, now I'm not trying to give them advice, really, but I'm just saying that as a matter of fact, if you're going to be a Democrat person and you want to connect to people, you have to meet them where they are. When you're trying to change them, that's going to turn them off. Now, some people are going to just be led and 
you could just tell them whatever they want. Like I was watching this video from, it might have been Savannah Hernandez or somebody else, where they were out there at a Pride event asking people, what do you identify as? Now, the more white liberal people, they were talking about, oh, I identify as pan, gender, queer, non-conforming, LGB, binary, all types of just random stuff they made up right, like probably right there on the spot or a little bit before that. But when you ask the black folks, what do you identify as gay? <laughs> and then, and then it had to be a question of, oh, nah, but like, um, are, are you pan? Are you this? Are you that? Then they had to make something up. And I think my point is that there's a, there's a gap right there. There, there. There's a gap symbolized by the black and the white in that instance. But it's not necessarily even black and white. If you go outside of a pride event and just go to the streets of any city USA, and you ask that question to random people, you'll probably get a similar kind of response. The more high leftist, far leftist, they'll say things like, oh, I identify as this, 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 and this. But regular normies, rather black, white, Puerto Rican, Kenny Stripe, they're going to say, oh, I'm gay. Oh, I'm bi or something like that. That'd be how they answer it. There's a communication gap, right? And then that that's my next point about the, the lower class he was talking about. And they're being overpromised things because they, they quote unquote need things. They want things they're being overpromised, but there would never be any kind of delivery. But a lot of people who are in a lower class are undereducated and they don't even know any better. So if you tell them, Hey, reparations, we'll, we'll give you that. We'll, we'll talk about that. Then they think, Oh, well, they're doing right for me because they're talking about rep reparations. They, they're at least going to bring it up at a meeting. Although it's been 145 years or however long it's been since the end of slavery, 1865 is now 2022 and it's never been reparations at all. The most you're going to get is all you've ever gotten. Uh, food stamp, Section 8, EBT, WIC, TANF, you won't get anything more than that. Pell grants for college, student loans, you won't get anything more than that. That's just what it is where the Democrats keep promising and promising and promising never delivering. And at a certain point, people that are at that lower level economically, they recognize it and be like, Hey, wait a minute. I've been promised a thing for 40 years. I'm living in the hood. I mean, it, again, anywhere city USA in the hood and things have been the exact same throughout my entire life, but I keep getting promised a different life. So at a certain point, I'm going to go over there or just not even, not even participate in the whole system. And then the middle class, those that are not that high leftist, those that are not on the very bottom of the economic totem pole, those that are just regular everyday working people, working hard, taking care of themselves and their families, wives, kids, husbands, etc., they're getting the squeeze. They're getting a squeeze from all this kind of talk that's being pressed upon them from the high leftists. Then they're getting squeezed to take care of those that are at the lower level economically. They're seen as rich, although they're not. They have a little bit of savings. They got a house and maybe a couple of cars and that's it. But they don't have enough to just go buy a mega yacht or fly private to some kind of green energy conference, <coughs> Al Gore anyway. They don't have that kind of money, but they're being treated as such by the high leftists who think that if you're not dirt poor, then you got to just give all your money to the federales. Like it's some kind of um, like some kind of communions or kind of uh, tithing or offering or something like that at a church. So taxes keep rising. Bills keep rising. Inflation is just out of control. Home ownership is becoming less of a reality, especially on the left coast. Forget about it. You in Los Angeles don't need just just go ahead and move to Nevada and figure it out that way. So they're leaving as well. It's like, you know what? This is too much. I'm being taxed to death. I'm being blamed for all the ills of society, for all the ills of the world. I'm going to go over there. So the only ones left will be the high and far leftists. But you can't have a party, a political system, or any kind of government with just one small slice of the country being served. That's not how it's going to go. So if the Democrats want to stay relevant, if they want to have any kind of success in the future on a large scale, they have to change like that. Now, if it's up to me, I would just say, hey, let them die off. Just, just let them go ahead and just go that way, never to recover. That's fine for me. But if you want to take my advice, Democratic Party, if you want to take Van Jones' advice, you got to tighten up because... If you don't, the future won't look too good for you, at least in my humble opinion. But I think I'll leave that right there for now.
And what say you? What do you think about what Van Jones was saying about these leftists and how they speak and they're weird and they're just, they have these ideas and these, this ideology that does not connect to the average everyday American. Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. Do you think that a Democratic Party will die off? Do you think that their ideology will die off? Because there's a lot of stuff going on. You got drag queen story time. You got trans athletes in that, uh, in, in NCAA and professional sports. And it appears to be an ever- a, a never ending creep into society. Will it stop or will it accelerate? Or here's here, how about this? Will it accelerate and then hit a wall and rapidly decelerate? Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.